What's going on guys? In this one we're going to go over five of the most common mistakes with closed terrariums. Now just to give you a basic understanding of what a closed terrarium is, if you're a little hazy on that, it's basically like any terrarium like the one I've got behind me, except that it's going to be a totally closed environment. So you're really not going to be adding any extra water or plants or nutrients or anything like that. Essentially the idea is that you can just close it off in the container. It makes its own little environment slash ecosystem and kind of just takes care of itself. Things grow and then decay and break down and take care of all the nutrients that it'll need. New growth sprouts up, water cycle happens, all that good stuff. So now having a better idea of kind of what a closed terrarium is, the first mistake that a lot of people make is choosing the wrong container. I feel like it's pretty obvious to say you want to put these in a mostly transparent container because they are going to need light for all those plants to grow. Grow. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to really build a closed terrarium in a non-transparent container anyway because then you're not going to be able to see it, but it's worth being said. The second most important thing with the terrarium is making sure you've got a tight seal on it. With the closed terrarium, the idea is that you're not going to be doing a lot of maintenance, you're not going to be adding any other nutrients, and so you really don't want water to be escaping. A lot of times with closed terrariums, it's impossible to get a perfectly fit seal, so you're going to end up losing a little water and you're going to have to add some, but if you just don't have that tight seal on the top of the terrarium, you're going to lose water a lot faster and your terrarium is really just not going to be able to take care of itself. Now mistake number two is really only going to be a problem once you have that tight seal and that's going to be improper drainage. With closed terrariums it's very important that you have a solid drainage layer that all that water that's going to be in there can be sitting in. When you've got just excess water sitting in the soil it's going to start to mold, decompose, break down and in such a closed environment the plants and animals that you have in there aren't going to be able to take care of that fast enough. It's just going to mold and going to take over everything that you've got growing in that tank. When things start to mold it'll lead to like root rot so the biggest thing you want to do is make sure you've got a solid drainage layer easiest way to do that is to just add enough gravel that all the water you put in can be sitting in that base layer even with the drainage layer you're going to want to make sure you don't add too much water to your terrarium or you're going to have the same problems anyway now mistake number three is going to be neglecting the light requirements of the plants that you put in like we talked about mistake number one you're going to want to make sure you have a transparent container that you've got everything in but even with that you're not going to be able to leave these just in a dark room because obviously plants need light to live now putting these in direct sunlight is also not recommended just because it is a closed terrarium. They can overheat, start to cook, and when you get a lot more water vapor, it's a lot easier to start losing that out of a not tightly sealed lid. I like to place mine in either a windowsill that never gets direct sunlight or just in the same room where I have windows open, there's always lights. If every once in a while you want to move it somewhere where it can be in the sun for a couple hours, you definitely could try that. But typically the idea of closed terrariums is just lack of maintenance and the ease of taking care of it. Now mistake number four is going to be choosing the wrong types of plants to put in a closed terrarium. A lot of great options are going to include mosses and other small foliage plants that don't take up too much space. Obviously in these closed terrariums, humidity can be a little bit higher, so choosing plants that like to live in dry environments typically isn't the best. Now depending on how you choose to set up your closed terrarium as well as the size and depth of the soil is going to affect plant growth of course. In theory in a closed terrarium you can put most plants in as long as whatever care requirements that plant needs is built into that terrarium. So whether it's higher light, higher water, different soil nutrients, as long as those things are there those plants should be able to grow because essentially a closed terrarium is just an enclosed environment or ecosystem that will end up taking care of those plants. That being said if you're just getting started those mosses and other small like creeping plants or small foliage is going to be a great place to start. Basically just hard to kill plants that prefer higher humidity and low to medium light. Those things are going to be the easiest to take care of and when you're shooting for low maintenance you're going to have to open that closed terrarium and take care of those things a lot less than even faster growing plants. And finally most common mistake number five something we've kind of already talked about but that would be ignoring maintenance. Even though this is a closed terrarium and if you set it up right you could leave it for as long as you'd like. These closed terrariums are still going to overgrow. They're going to grow up the sides of the container and really the best way to maintain these to be good to look at is to do general maintenance every few months or a year or whatever it takes for your terrarium just so you can maintain the enjoyment of looking at it instead of just an overgrown jar or terrarium that's sitting on the desk. So in conclusion five of the most common mistakes with the closed terrariums are going to be choosing the wrong container, ignoring drainage, neglecting the light requirements, poor plant selection, and not maintaining them. So if you keep those things in mind with your closed terrariums it's going to be a lot easier for you to enjoy those things. The greatest thing about the closed terrariums though is that it's so easy. You can do it in a two liter bottle, a cool vase that you find at a pawn shop, and then you can fill it with things that are just around your natural environment wherever you live. The trial and error is really where the enjoyment comes from, so make sure you're trying a lot of different things. Just keep those things in mind, and you should do just fine. Thanks for watching.